your net worth tells you how healthy your financial life is. I check my net worth on a quarterly basis and it's the start of a new year. So that means it's the start of the first quarter. So it's time to see where I stand with my net worth. And we're gonna compare it to where I was last year at the beginning of Q1 in 2019. I'm Shane of The Wealth Vibe, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. I think it's super important to track your net worth because it tells you how well you're doing towards reaching your financial goals. And one of my long-term financial goals is to have a positive net worth. And so I have been checking my net worth for the past year on a quarterly basis to see how well I am doing towards reaching that goal of having a positive net worth. And so if you have been around here for the past year, you know that 2019 was not my best financial year. I had a few losses. And I still believe that I did really well with reaching my goal towards having a positive net worth. I will say I have not reached a positive net worth, but I'm still tracking that way. But we're gonna get straight into my numbers to see where I actually stand with my net worth, but I feel really good about it. I have my net worth spreadsheet pulled up. This is what I use to track all of my assets and my liabilities that will then tell me what my net worth is. If you're interested in getting this same spreadsheet, you can get it from the links down below and download your own copy of it. And you'll be able to use this and input your own numbers so that you can track your net worth. And I highly suggest that you track your net worth. So we're gonna get started. I already listed out all of my assets and all of my debts. And so we're gonna look at my various accounts in that order. So first we're gonna start with Acorns. So the story with the Acorns is that I actually did transfer out the money that I had in my Acorns account and I believe I put a pause on it. However, there still was money left over in the account. Not exactly sure why, but there is money left in the account and it actually might be because of a referral or something. So let's go check out how much money is actually left in my Acorns. So here is my Acorns account. I have $5.21 invested in Acorns. I'm not exactly sure how I ended up with this money in here, but I have $5.21, so we are going to add that to my net worth because every dollar, every penny counts. So I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet and type in $5.21. So the next thing we have is my Betterment IRA. So an IRA it is, is an individual retirement account. And for an individual person, you can max out your investments in that account upwards to $6,000 per year so far. And so when you invest money into that account, you're basically invest, investing money post-tax for your retirement. That's why it's called individual retirement account. So I put money into my IRA. I haven't actually done it for a few months now, but we're gonna see what the value is of my Betterment IRA right now. So let's go over to it and see. So it says that my net worth over here is, or not my net worth, <laughs> the value of my, this is what they say, but that's, my, not my, that's not my real net worth, okay? But the value of my Betterment IRA is $5,638.33. So I'm gonna go into the spreadsheet and put in that number. $5,638.33. Just verify that's right, yep. So the next thing we're gonna do is check out my emergency fund. So I actually have my emergency fund split between two accounts right now. I was trying to figure out some things with the accounts to see which ones would actually have a higher interest rate. And so I am still moving things around so they're not actually in the accounts that they will actually land in. But I have to do some math because like I said, they're in between two different accounts. So I have part of my emergency fund in this account here and it's $1,593.91. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the calculator. And then 93 cents and 91. What am I saying? $1,593.91. And then the other account I have $7,000. So my total amount in my emergency fund is $8,593.91. So let me just show you 
this is the amount that I have in my um, the rest of my emergency fund so I'm going to go ahead and take this and put $8,593.91 here under emergency fund so then I also have a CD I have a CD through Marcus and Marcus is managed through Goldman Sachs and so my CD, CD stands for Certificate of Deposit, it's something that I kind of accidentally opened. I thought it was a high yield interest account when I first looked at it and then after I went back and I was like, oh shoot, I put money in a CD. But it's totally fine. So um, I have this Certificate of Deposit account and that means that my money is locked into this account for 12 months. And so I have only $500 in there because my plan was to put $500 every single month, but you can't do that with a CD. And because I realized that, then that's all the money that I have in that account. So let's go over to the Marcus account. And so I have with interest, got in $507.26 in this account. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in under CD. $507.26. Then I also have an account with Robinhood. And so Robinhood, I really don't put any money into it. However, because I get free stocks, whenever someone uses my link for signing up for Robinhood, I also get a free stock. And so that's why I do have some money over in Robinhood because people have used my link and I have then purchased a free stock. And I'm actually going to start looking into Webull because they have an even better program, but I also hear that the platform is really good. So I'm going to be checking out Webull, but Webull even has better incentives where you can get like two stocks valued up to like 500 to, or to 1,000, depending on whatever promotion they have. So I'm going to definitely sign up under one of those and see if I get some money <laughs> um, invested through Webull. But let's go check out Robinhood and see what the value of my account is there. So with Robinhood, the value of my account is gonna fluctuate because it's in the market. And so um, even though it's after hours right now, it's still money in the market. So this is $31.16. So that's what I'm going to use right now even though it could change in just a matter of moments. So $31.16. And then the last asset that I have is my car. I have a 2016 Honda Civic, it is fully paid off. And so what I have to do is look at what the value of the car is on Kelly Blue Book. And I'm gonna be looking at the trading value. So we're gonna go over to Kelly Blue Book and I already plugged in all the information for my car, but I haven't looked at the value. So it says the trading value is from $11,970 to $13,039 and the middle point is $12,505. So I'm gonna take that middle point and put that into my value. And that's gonna be my asset value for my car. I have $27,280.87 in assets. So my assets have actually gone up a little over 7,000 or about $7,000. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> All right, so now let's take a look at my debts. So by debts, I have two debts. Um, one is my student loan and the other one is the iPhone 10s that I have. And is it, or 11? No, I don't have a 10s anymore. I have an 11. <laughs> I don't even know what I have. If you have been following me, you know that in August I went to Mexico, lost my phone, and I had already paid off a phone, but because I lost it and did not have insurance on the phone, I needed to get a new one. I decided to upgrade to the iPhone 11, and I got it on the installment plan. There's no interest with that, um, and I don't have a plan to pay it off earlier, but I do have insurance on this one. But those are my two debts, student loan and iPhone. And I really just say student loan because, I don't know, it makes me feel better <laughs> to just say student loan. But in reality, those are the two debts that I have. So let's go check out my student loans. So I think I need to actually sign in. So here is the balance on my student loan. I have $54,596.04 in student loans. And so I'm gonna go over and put that in. 54,000, what did it say, 
four cents. Now we're gonna check out the last debt, which is my iPhone. So I pulled up the equipment installment plan that I have with T-Mobile, which basically is my debt towards T-Mobile for having the iPhone 11. And so it says that I owe $625 left on this phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. So that means that I have a net worth of negative $27,940.17. And I am super ecstatic about it. And it seems weird to be really excited about having a negative net worth, but I have been through so much financially this year that I am just so proud of myself for being able to make such progress with my net worth this year. So in January 2019, my net worth was negative $47,882. And now, despite not having a job halfway through the year and just being able to like now have a net worth that has dropped 20,000 or increased, sorry, has increased $20,000. Like what? I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. I, can't, I just am so excited to see what is going to happen with my net worth in this year. I am really believing that this year my net worth is going to become positive because of a few different reasons. One, because I would like to pay off my unsubsidized student loans. And so I have two unsubsidized student loans outside or within the package of student loans that I have with Great Lakes. You saw that my total balance was $54,596. So between those two loans that I want to pay off, that would bring me to, just by that alone, would bring me to a positive net worth. I would still be in debt, but it would bring me to a positive net worth. And I also anticipate that I should be able to put more into my IRA and I should be able to build up my emergency fund a little bit more as well. And so I'm really excited that this is the year. 2020 is the year where I will have a positive net worth, y'all. I will have a positive net worth. I am so excited about it. If you want to learn more about how I'm able to make such strides with my net worth by implementing some of my strategies, you want to take a look at this video right here because it's going to tell you how I've been able to make progress towards having a positive net worth. And I hope that you are subscribed so that you can stay tuned for when my net worth crosses over into the positive. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.